it's a snow day. <laughs> Chicago is getting dumped on. Six to 12 inches is what they're calling for. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. For those of you in, in, uh, in Chicago, do you remember Snowmageddon? Do you remember? It's been a decade. So for those of you that are unfamiliar, a decade ago, we got dumped on. And you would have seen us on national news because it literally uh, dumped so fast. It trapped people along our lake. There's a major thoroughfare there. It trapped people on there. They had to go out in snowmobiles to rescue people. The... Uh, our personal story of Snowmageddon is I picked Gabby up, but we both work downtown uh, in the city and uh, I picked her up from work and we started uh, making our way home. We happened to be on that thoroughfare uh, that ran along the lake and we hit uh, Fullerton. There's a little incline. Everyone started spinning out. There was no one in front of us. Everyone just started spinning out and I just looked at Gabby and I said, please close your eyes because I don't need a backseat driver right now. And I just floored it because we had a wonderful infinity. I shit you not, we were one of the last vehicles that made it off of Lakeshore Drive before. That was it because everyone started spinning out. They blocked it. So we safely made it home. It was a very scary night for a lot of people. I don't wish for that, but I am really excited that it's a snow day. <laughs> um, I... Uh, on Friday, I went in for some blood work and uh, my platelets aren't working the way that they're supposed to. So we're back on the trial drug. I'm gonna claim today to just not think about it. I'm starting my morning with a lovely cup of hot chocolate from Mindy's Hot Chocolate. She has a, a home kits that you can make her hot chocolate. Yum, yum, yum. If you don't know Mindy's Hot Chocolate and you're in Chicago, look it up. Um, yeah, reading a book, having some hot chocolate, and uh, I'm looking forward to shoveling. I haven't been able to do that. Um, I really like shoveling. I'm that nerd that like to, used to enjoy getting up at like five in the morning and the fresh snow and getting it all done before I went to work. Uh, I, I don't know. I always looked at it as a fun workout. I put music on. I love the snow, so it wasn't... I miss it. And I think I'm healthy enough that I'm gonna be able to shovel. I know, right? I'm excited about shoveling, it's true. Yeah, I am planned out a perfect snow day. I'm going to make baozi. Um, It is uh, yeast uh, flour, uh, steamed uh, Chinese steamed dumplings. It was one of my favorite dishes when I lived in China. And uh, yeah. I'm gonna make some steamed dumplings. I'm gonna shovel, um, you know, this trial drug that I have to be on to fix my platelets. It makes it so I don't really have an attention span. <laughs> so I like, I can read, but like five pages and then I have to stop and wander around. So today it just feels like a perfect day for all of that. <laughs> I remember I turned 25 in uh, in China. I had my 25th birthday in Tiananmen Square with a bunch of uh, college-age students. And mind you, this was 20 years ago, so the rules were so different, right? Um, we went out that night and celebrated uh, um, uh, karaoke and dinner and, and running around. And at the end of the night, so uh, um, all the trains had left and, uh, uh, and so, uh, <laughs> my friends created a great big circle, put me in the middle, put some jackets over me and I hung in because we had to sneak past security because back when I uh, was there, you foreigners were not allowed to stay with nationals without uh, permission for like, you had to jump through so many hoops and it never worked out. Anyways, of course we were college students. So we were like, fuck the man. And uh, yeah. <laughs> And they snuck me in. They got me in. Um, whew, man, that was a rough, rough uh, uh, birthday too because it was uh, boys against girls in a drinking contest. And they were just excited because they had the American, the girls. And so, of course, we won because, you know, I could drink everyone under the table. <laughs> Not saying that I'm proud of that. But... Uh, <laughs> Let me tell you, being in a country that has 
no running water, no cold water. Everyone that complains about your life here, like <laughs> try having a hangover and you can't have anything to drink. <laughs> you have to boil your water first, make your tea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. about um so dumplings whether it be uh you know just classic dumplings uh, um that you boil or pan fry or steam or whatever um these uh this flour has a little bit of yeast in it so it rises whatever the case may be this is an opportunity for everyone to get together and you have to make the filling my filling happens to be some kimchi and uh, chinese broccoli um but you made the filling and then you made the dough and then you had to, you know, and it was hours that you spent uh, chatting and playing games and, and I don't know, I really, I always like the communal thing of uh, um, growing up in a big family and everyone came together and, and cooked together and even today as an adult, uh, recently my sister, um, retired just a few years ago and you know we have all this family come in we haven't seen a lot of people in years whatever but everyone just like just goes into the kitchen and and you know shoulder to shoulder starts working together and it does it's just i really like that i think it's something that we miss out a lot in here in america is the the pleasure of making food the pleasure of consuming food, the pleasure of doing it as a, as a group. It's one of the things I missed during COVID. Um, one of the things that <laughs> when I was diagnosed, it was the thing that I just wanted to have dinner parties with my friends. So I'm super excited to have the energy to be able to to cook and, and work through my feelings that way. It's a very nice outlet. Not always can I eat it. A lot of times I'm less sick, but I still get to make it. I guess I still get to feed my wife. My neighbors love me because <laughs> I'm constantly feeding them. lately about like, I'm not gonna grow old and with that uh, I know a lot of people you think about like growing old and your body starts to fail and I'm gonna miss out on all that yay but also I don't know you know like I worked really hard to retire early so because I thought you know like I was finally gonna learn the banjo I was going to turn my god-awful kitchen Spanglish in to actually learn Spanish. Things like that. And what I've been grieving lately is that I, um, I just thought there was a lot that I was gonna learn. I, I was, there was a lot, not that I was gonna do, but you know, like, Perfect pausa. <laughs> so, um, there's, it's also a mind fuck when 
I don't really have an attention span. Uh, I didn't have one in the first place, ADHD. Uh, and then now these chemicals, the drugs, the things, you know, um, and so I have to be patient with myself. I can't, I don't really have the option to, to learn, like to decide to learn Spanish. <laughs> like, I'm lucky I remember to put my shoes on before I leave the house. So, um, but I can do things like this and I can make these every day for however long I'm here or once a week or something, I don't know. <laughs> don't put off your dreams, people. If you wanna do something, do it. If you wanna learn something, learn it. Then have an experience, make it happen. I was reading a book this morning. Um, one of the things that I've been enjoying over this past year is uh, if I can read um, young adult novels, I find it so fascinating and exciting to see who are who's writing for young girls today who's writing for young women, right? Because we really didn't have a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just some really cool stuff going. And, and also not, uh, uh, not things like, I don't know, what was it called? Um, the Persepolis, Persep it starts with a P, it was a graphic novel and uh, it was about Iran, I think it was. Um, anyways, you, you know, like you, if you, if you saw a, an Iranian woman writing a novel for a young adult novel or a young graphic novel, you suppose that it would be about Iran and their life, her, you know, whatever. But what's been really cool lately is that like, it's the field is so diversified and, and the stories are so diverse and it's just, I don't know, it's really exciting. Um, so this morning I was reading a book and really the theme was uh, taking chances, taking chances, right? I know I grew up very um, afraid to be hurt, right? Child of an alcoholic, you're, you know, you got lots of stuff that just makes you <laughs> make decisions like that, right? So afraid to be hurt, afraid to take chances. And I think that that's, this book was about taking chances. And so I'm trying to remind myself, take some chances. Yeah, I don't know how long I'm gonna be here, but reading a book is not a waste of time. Learning a new skill, is, if I can, is not a waste of time. I struggle with that, right? I struggle with the excitement because I'm fucking here, yay! And then, why bother? So, why bother? Because we're fucking here. <laughs> I'm trying to tell myself. Oh, anyways, I'll let you know how these turn out. Okay, let's see. <laughs> they turned out pretty well. I definitely need to make my dough uh, thicker. Um, I realized that, but still, mm, okay. So the dipping sauce is uh, um, a vinegar. Uh, oh, I don't even know how to describe this vinegar. If, if anyone can describe Chinese uh, vinegar, um, then put it in the comments because uh, it's not like what um, white people are going to think vinegar is. Anyways, it's vinegar, soy sauce, and some, uh, chili, um, oil. So, ha ha ha. Mmm. Mmm. It's not bad. And you know what? I can taste it. Mm. I would hope so. It's got kimchi in it, but not always going to taste things. Mmm. Well, not bad for a play day. <laughs>